Can I just post it down? Um, and yeah, the topic of today, today is to paint contributor more models. Um, um, so, so, hands up, who has already started working on a Drupal 8 project? Um, sites with multi country, multi domain functionalities? We haven't started doing so. Um, we, we try to limit our use cases to what we have tested so far. Um, but I think in the next half of a year, um, building with domain will definitely be something that we, that we will try. But in, in general, I think every, every agency, every developer has their own personal taste on how you want to approach uh, using modules. And some say that you should not use any alpha release, for example, or you should not use any dev release, and there's definitely reasons for that. Um, but for example, if you rely on, secure, on the security team, um, but in general, we think that well, just because it has a name, because it's an alpha release, because it's a beta release, it also depends a lot on how much trust do you have for the developers that work on that module. Like a module can have a final release, and it's totally broken. Um, so being part of a community, having spent time um, work, working on several projects, I, I think every one of us will get our own understanding on how stable something is, how much we can trust it. Yes. Um, workflows, yes. Um, so for example, the email registration module, it's like a simple workflow that's already there. Um, the workbench moderation, it's, it just had an alpha release recently, and I couldn't try it, but I think it's kind of nice. Um, entity registration is not there, but there's like an alternative to it, uh, RNG. I found it quite interesting. I played around a bit. It's, it's like very, it has a lot of functionality already. Um, then besides that, yeah, the other workflow module has its first um, alpha release. <coughs> Organic groups is already being ported, and we are working actively on porting the rules module. So we we'd expect the first um, MVP in the next month. And um, yeah, you can sprint with us on Sunday. Um, basically, the rules module already provides a lot of functionality. Um, so it's kind of interesting. Other modules can already start porting their integrations, um, but there is no way to see it, so that, that will take at least a month. All right. Um, yeah. So we got <coughs> we got those. Um, for building, let's talk a bit about how we approach menus. Well, uh, Drupal Core itself. Um, obviously provides the menu UI, the custom menu links, um, and then, for example, the sitemap module already works. Um, also, web comes menu. Um, when we talk about forms, uh, the web form module, it's kind of a <coughs> not ported module at the moment. And interestingly, the e-form or entity form um, has been started porting. But what we currently rely on is the contact module. So that's part of Drupal Core, and you can create different uh, forms based on the contact module. Um, just by itself, it doesn't store anything. So um, the contact storage module allows you to then store the data. And um, yeah, for example, with the, with the CSV serializer, you can also export the data that got stored into um, for other systems. Um, I think the, yeah, the main difference here is that uh, like how scalable is the solution? Like if you want your clients to be able to create their own formula, then that's definitely a use case um, that we would implement with Webform because all the content of the e-form, they rely on fields being created for every of the, of the form fields and that can be getting slow if you like create thousands of fields. Um, SEO. So, well, Drupal Core by itself obviously supports PAR. Um, then the meta tag module has made quite some steps in development. Um, I found it interesting that 
that you would uh, use MetaTag now as a field, so you, uh, you like you attach a field to, to a node type, and there you can specify the defaults. Um, but now with the latest release, um, there's also the classic MetaTag approach where um, you can define like global defaults and then override them for node types or for other, for other um, like taxonomies, for example. Then path auto is already pretty uh, pretty solid. Um, the redirect module as well. Um, yes, we also use the Google Analytics module um, and then XML sitemap. Uh, that didn't work out because it, it's not like the, the standard XML sitemap module doesn't support multilingual at the moment. Um, we started working on a patch, but it didn't get very far. Um, but we found an alternative. So the simple XML sitemap module um, also works with multilingual and it's really solid. Um, yeah, then also uh, the file field paths and pathologic modules are kind of in a shape that you can already play around with. Um, then display data. Um, so tomorrow I will do a session together with Adam Drew about uh, coding versus clicking where we compare approaches of uh, implementing layouts in code or with site building tools. And some of them are mentioned here. Like, um, so the, the Blocks and Layouts initiative has made like very good progress um, in terms of enabling blocks to be much more than they were in Drupal 7. So the block system in Drupal 7 was basically something that nobody liked at all. And now it's uh, based on plugins. Um, you can, as I said, you can put, uh, you can define different block types. You can put fields on them. Um, so it's kind of interesting, also in terms of how do I structure my content? Um, because basically, you can create reusable pieces of, of content based on blocks. Um, but then, when you want to lay out, um, so there's like <coughs> something. Like it got split up into different parts. When the panels module was not yet ported, they first started to extract page manager. Um, and together with the layout plugin, you could already create like landing pages that have different regions and place any kind of block into them. It's kind of great. Um, also, the display, display suite module has been ported really early. So they had a release like over a year ago already. <coughs> um, and yeah, it's kind of a matter of taste, but I think you can use any of these. And Panels and Panelizer have had releases in the last month as well. Um, so they also got to a point where people can already try them. Uh, I personally, as I said, um, we use Paragraphs most of the time. Um, and Layout Plugin and Page Manager, that's what we have used successfully already on, on, on projects. Um, I think that panels now is also in the shape that I would try it, and I've just yeah, just haven't uh, had a need for display suite so far. Um, then listings, well, that's kind of easy. No contributed modules required there. Uh, views, the views UI, they are part of the core. Um, there are some small like extension modules for them available. Um, more interestingly, search. So the Drupal core search is not listed here because yeah, we kind of think we should not do a search with core search. Um, the, the exciting thing about <laughs> uh, the exciting thing is um, that the Apache Solar module and the Search API module they join forces. So for Drupal 8, there will be no more confusion between two competing modules. Um, and yeah, Search API, um, even with the Solar Search, um, they all have had releases, um, like multiple releases already. And they're adding more and more functionality there. Um, also, Facets, so it's now renamed from Facet API to Facets. Um, they are a really, really active initiative. And the Facets, um, we already started using it on a project that we haven't released yet, um, but so far, like it's, it's much more limited because you don't have all the different uh, facet widgets, for example. But in general, um, I think it's definitely something that I would already, and uh, if I'm not familiar with it, I would already install and try out. Um, as mentioned, the, the pretty paths module is not ported. 
um, but I'm looking into finding somebody um, take over maintainership for it. So if you want to do that, um, or no, to be honest, um, maybe it doesn't it doesn't even have to exist because if we get the facets module right, um, the overhead of the 3D parts module could be reduced even more. And then we can just maybe add it as an extension there. All right, maps. Um, I did my uh, master's thesis on, on creating interactive maps with Drupal, which was kind of fun. So uh, the GeoCluster module um, is about putting 100,000 or millions of points on the map and make it, it scalable. Um, but right now I'm going to talk more about like just the standard use case, you want to have uh, a map on the contact page, for example. Um, and <clears throat> or you want to visualize a list of data on a map. And what we kind of think is, is also a good opportunity in general for, for all of the use cases where you don't find the module yet. Well, maybe there's just a JavaScript library, or you can, um, in general, with the, uh, with the hype about Drupal 8, um, getting off the island. Maybe for, for those use cases where you don't find yet the module, maybe there's like a, a symphony bundle for that. Um, so for the maps, we recommend, well, we don't need all those bloated modules. We just go with JavaScript if possible and expose the data as a, as a GeoJSON, for example, on the server side. Um, yeah, the views GeoJSON, the, the GeoField modules are in like alpha releases. So they're quite buggy at the moment as far as I've seen. Um, and then there's a ton of helper modules. So um, for administrative pur pur purposes, um, well, Drupal Core has the contextual links, which, which allow you to, to be able to edit things wherever you are on the site, which is cool. Um, oops. We always install the admin toolbar, so the, like the admin menu. Um, that you can quickly access um, in iTex, even though um, well, the, the, the responsive admin menu that Drupal 8 Core provides, it's also really great because from time to time I log into a Drupal 7 site on my phone and I realize that it would be nice. We should install that. I think it's backported actually, so we could install it. Yeah. Try to focus as much as possible on Drupal 8. Um, masquerade. <coughs> Um, also nice because you can switch between users um, that already works. Um, there's also an uh, uh, admin theme ported already to admin um, that was kind of popular in the 7 as well. Um, then services. Um, so we also have Klausi in the room who is the, the maintainer of the REST module. Thank you. Um, so Drupal Core by itself. Um, with all the talks about uh, decoupling Drupal, um, Drupal Core itself provides the, the RESTful functionality, which is great. Um, HAL is like the serialization. <coughs> um, and then I'm adding feeds here, so the feeds module is not ported at the moment. And uh, like somebody started saying that he's porting it, but it doesn't look at the moment that there's much progress. Um, and I also want to add GraphQL because that's like the new hype. Um, it's going to be awesome when we are able to just drill into the data and um, expose it as a graph. Um, so the GraphQL is quite active and it's also funded. Um, there's like a project behind that to, to make it happen. So I'm looking forward to, to the results there. Um, yes. Then performance. Um, Drupal 8 by itself has, has quite some performance improvements based on the cache tech system. Um, and there's already a release for the Vanish module. Um, and then we're looking forward to Big 5 being integrated into Drupal Core. Um, and there's like a first release of the Ultimate Chrome module if you rely on that. Probably makes sense if you have more complicated contracts. Um, then configuration management, um, all part of Drupal Core. I think that's a, a big relief for all of us. Um, it's, I think 
from, from my understanding, people are still figuring out the, the perfect workflows, how it's going to work out. Um, the, the bundle, so what you can do now with Drupal Core is that everything gets exported. Um, but if you want a bundle functionality, if you want to transfer functionality to another site, uh, what you want then to use is the features module. And that for me didn't work out yet. Um, <coughs> I don't know, has anyone, is anyone using features <coughs> for Drupal 8? For Drupal 8? Right, and then there, there is like a, a collection of helper modules that tr uh, try to facilitate the configuration management, like for example, automatically exporting whenever somebody is site building. Um, but there, I haven't I haven't seen like the one module there. Um, and then what we always use is the link CSS module just to. <coughs> just to ensure that the, that the CSS is properly put into the HTML. And the advanced aggregation module also has a first two needs. Um, so if you want to, through site building, put all the JavaScript into the filter, that's, that's what you want to do there. Um, yes, and then, well, migrate is in Corp. Um, and the, the migrate UI um, will also be soon. Um, and yeah, the migrant to Drupal, the Drupal to Drupal, they, they are all pretty usable already. Um, and then I'm adding some more like coder, token, devel, C tools, git deploy, hacked, um, honeypot. Um, those all are modules, um, like helper modules that we can already use or need to use. Um, and that's it basically. Like, I think. Um, uh, that was like um, a big overview. As we can see on the next slide, um, there's some really good uh, resources. I definitely would recommend the content tracker. So um, people have started creating issues for every of these modules. And you can see on the Kanban style board which of the modules have already been started porting, which of the modules have uh, are redundant now because they're covered by Drupal core functionality. There's like 50 of them that we don't need anymore. Um, so that's kind of the go-to uh, overview. Because this presentation will probably tomorrow be outdated again. Um, yeah. um, then there's also DA status uh, from MD systems. Um, what they show there is also like if tests are failing, how, how the test status is. Um, yes. um, then I would like to show you a spreadsheet. So, basically, the information that I talked about right now is what I in, what I distilled into <coughs> this, uh, Google spreadsheet. Um, and that's also linked from the presentation. So it's, again, it's my personal assessment of what is relevant and how well ported it is. But it's maybe a good, a good list to just skim through and to, dis to decide for yourself uh, what, you're gonna, what you're gonna try out next, uh, what you can already sell your customers or not. Um, yes. Um, all right, any questions? So what would be the reason for you to suggest the customer to use Drupal 7 instead of Drupal 8? Is there specific models or specific functionality or what are, what's the missing, what, well, the missing piece or the missing pieces that are like the main driving force for getting someone to 7? Well, first it I think it depends on multiple things, like the, the customer's access to an agency that can provide Drupal 8 services. And there's more and more agencies that can provide Drupal 8 services, but there's a lot of agencies that have no experience with Drupal 8 yet. So it's like this chicken egg problem, that you first have to learn it, and then you can use it. But um, um, the big pieces that are missing, like if you really need web form, then either 
Either you have to find a custom solution to build your own web form module or to actually port the web form module. Um, it's more like a commodity question. Like, would you want to invest in something that is rock solid that people have used for various years already? Or do you want to invest into something that not thousands of people have used already? But it's going to be relevant for much, much longer because the I mean, now everybody's freaking out about Drupal 6 not being supported anymore, and the same will happen for Drupal 7. So um, we can make our customers sure that the Drupal 7 will be supported, let's say, three, four, five years. We don't know exactly, but um, that kind of number. And if they want to build something that is supported longer, <laughs> I, would, I would always try to go with 8 if possible. It's also a matter of does that answer your question? Yeah. So, in the hypothetical side, that has an average complexity. So, uh, when can I port for that? So, any approximate deadline where uh, the value will be as usable as the person? Could you repeat that? Or, uh, I'm not sure if I understood. Uh, I think actually Drupal is is more <coughs> usable in in certain set in certain like Drupal 8 doesn't require as many workarounds as we have in Drupal 7 for example. So Drupal 8 is already better than Drupal 7 in a certain sense. And yeah, it's like already more extensible. Um, and it's all like the the, the, the solutions in the solutions that have proven themselves in Drupal 7 are there for Drupal 8 and much more flexible. Like you can attach fields to blocks, for example, which is uh, yeah, which yeah. provides more and more. Some things will just throw away and nobody will port them at all. But like, let's say the 80% use case that, that every one of us likes to be able to sell to our clients. And I would say like in the next half a year, we'll be able to build a lot of stuff for it. Um, but if that covers your particular use case, your particular module, um, there is officially, there's nobody able to tell you that everything will be ported at some point. It just doesn't work in, in our open source environment. But there's, um, like I know that, for example, Acquia is also like, trying to fund a lot of contributed modules. Um, for example, they provided also funds for us for the rules initiative. And that allowed us um, to now predict that the MVP will be ready in the next month. Um, so that's something really helpful. And I think that's something, I don't know. Like, Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's the perfect cause. If, if every one of us uh, dedicates a bit of time to Drupal Core or, or provides a bit of funding to the module that we want to see, it doesn't mean that we have to fund all the modules because if we multiply our resources, um, um, then success is close. You can say for a developer and service provider, if you are a service provider, so I can to start. But for a salesperson, you can say after six months or after one year, you can say now. So, of course. Yeah. Um, right. So I, uh, one of my customers have assigned in Drupal 6, and it's running from last four years. And I've just joined for the maintenance of the application. I propose you to migrate in Drupal 7, mm -hmm. but he's mentioned in the market. So let's wait for Drupal 8 for some developer. Um, <clears throat> so with with Drupal 8, we have we have ditched the upgrade, um, like the update functionality, and what we now prefer is migration. Right. So we don't just hit a button that tries to upgrade everything, but we. Con like we program or configure a migration that will just fetch the data or fetch the configuration and translate it into a new site, which in general is what everybody found as a best practice anyways, because after a couple of years, what you have built in an older Drupal version is not the way that you want to build it again. Like you, you still want to restructure things, like you want to learn from the mistakes you've done. You want to build something fresh and new. You maybe also want to just throw away a bunch of functionality that nobody needs anymore on the website. Um, so I think going from 6 to 8 is a perfectly valid choice. Um, because, yeah, it's, it's, it has a longer future. Uh, I have a question about importing content. Uh, since the feed module is not available in Drupal 8, is the uh, migrate module only way to, to import initial content for website? To make an initial content import? Yes. Um, I don't know the import content module. Yeah. Okay. So Initially, Drupal is quite upgrade. Don't use migrate. Uh, no, it's upgrade automatically. My uh, upgrade module is written in a structure that automatically uh, no, not like uh, migrate project, but just uh, updating a website and when I import the initial content from a CSV file and then I'll import the new module. Yes, migrate module. Yes, two to two hours. So I have a distribution called Multilingual Demo that has like 10 lines of code to import a CSV to entities. So it's probably easier to use the 10 lines of code instead of the migrate module because there's no, like for the migrate module you would need to somehow figure out how to parse that, like get that CSV and map that to entities and stuff is probably harder than just reading the CSV and putting it to the right fields. Um, so if you want to look it up, it's the multiple underscore demo project on Drupal.org. It has all the code in the install file for setting up a sample site with uh, sample content, sample taxonomy terms, etc. Okay, well then. Multiple demo. There's also the Drupal console provides a command as well for generating content. But if you want to import real content, obviously, like the feeds module, for example, has an important leader, <coughs> but such a small help for a um, uh, developer can definitely provide it. So it's super easy to create content that there's not a lot In continuation, how easy would it be to migrate a Drupal 7 site into Drupal 8? Because it's not upgraded to Drupal 8. Um, so you need to rebuild the site again in Drupal 8? Or, or no, actually, the, the migrate Drupal to Drupal understands the configuration that you have on your own site and will will allow you to to import that configuration. Um, so it then depends on how many contributed modules you have and if they also pro provide their own migration path. Um, yeah, but 
um, if you can if you can live with the with the core functionality and then build around again or uh, create custom migrations for everything else you need. Um, it really depends on the how the site was built and how, how complex it was. So. But um, the nice thing about migrations is that you can just rerun them. So you first start uh, migrating, then you got to build around, and then you can rerun the migrations later. So, related to the same question, uh, what I wanted to know is if I have a Drupal 6 site, that what this guy was referring to, mm -hmm. and if you are referring that we should go directly to Drupal 8, and this entire session is about 200 modules, which is still in a phase and still going on, and a lot of things are still need to be ported. So do you think in a, in a semi-complex Drupal 6 site, right now is a time to do go directly to Drupal 8, or we have to wait till all these 200 models get ported in Drupal 8? I would hope that you don't need the 200 models anymore for your Drupal 8 site, because um, uh, some of them will be redundant, some of them um, you can find more elegant solutions in Drupal 8. Yeah. Um, so in the general, I think having 200 modules is it's like really the upper limit that feels not good for maintaining it. Yeah. So um, in any case, I, I, would, I would like you to, to check if you can reduce something in the... So in the what you suggest to the client right now? He says we should go for Drupal 8. Evaluate first if all are ported, the way contributed models are available in these things. Right, yeah, let's, let's start with what works already. Let's try to be agile in the sense that we first build the, the stuff that we really, really need. Then the client can learn how Drupal 8 feels for him. And then he can take together with you decisions on how he wants to have the, the rest of the, let's say you can already port 60% of the functionality. And then you can decide together with the client, okay, now you know how to pull it looks and how well it plays with the 60%. Do we really need the 40%? And how are we gonna approach them? And when, so I don't know how long the project will take for you, but if it's like a, I don't know, six month project, then after three months, Drupal 8 itself will already be much faster. You can, based on the experience that you have while building a site, and the client has the experience, together you will be able to make more informed decisions then. Because the problem with like waterfall is that today <coughs> the client asks you what you're gonna be able to deliver in a year. It's, it's impossible. The problem arises because the client is not technical at all. Yeah. The more to anything about Drupal 7 or Drupal 8. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. Mm -hmm. What he care is it is D6, give me the latest version of Drupal. It is okay. D8. So it's, it's very difficult to convince him that Drupal 7 is a different architecture and Drupal 8 is a different architecture. Mm -hmm. If you really want to switch right now, I can actually support you for Drupal 7. Okay. And later we can do Drupal 8. Right. But Drupal 8 is a different architecture and still mm -hmm. not put a lot of money. Yeah. So that's the line to draw on. Mm -hmm. no, I, I understand that concern. But I try to choose projects where I can convince the client that it's Drupal 8 and it's not like 6 plus plus. Um, but you will have to work that out with, with based on that. Because uh, yeah, it's, it's hard for me to answer the question. <laughs> Person that uses the car has to adapt to the, to the new 
Uh, but in the, in the long run, he will really be able to benefit from, from all the improvements. Yeah, but it's disruptive technology. It's not like every Drupal release is just the same. And you can just take an up update button. That's just not what Drupal is. So, uh, it will be in December. Like, we we'll get closer to that in 8.1, 2, 3. Um, but with the major releases, from my perspective, uh, clients to expect us to be able to migrate from 6 to 8 without any cost is just the issue. So, uh, migrating from older version to new version, so is there any way to migrate the theme to the new version? I think the old theme. Um, <coughs> so, the question is if you can migrate that theme from an old to a new version. Um, well, in a sense, because if you adapt all the output uh, markup to reflect the same that you had before, then you can port the CSS. Um, but it, it will also change, like, because Drupal 8 has tweaked, so the templates will have to change a bit, or you will have to write a PHP-based template actually for Drupal 8. Um, it's, yeah. um, Or you decouple it first and you have it in front end and later you find it the back end. And yeah. There's various ways to, to approach it, but the, the automatic, automated upgrade for a uh, theme, as far as I know, doesn't exist. Maybe somebody will write some helpers that will replace that common functionality. But in the end, again, it's, it's, it's a new, it's totally new concept and usually doesn't make sense to migrate the thing from six to eight uh, directly. So actually, you have to rebuild everything? Yes. Yes.